We're going to begin with the back wall. Put a little border inside your quarter sheet of paper and you can cross your corners. We're going to put a back wall in, just like all of your grids today had a back wall. Come over quite a ways over to the right. Don't go down too far, though, or we won't fit everything in. So you're leaving a chunk at the bottom, a chunk at the side, and a little bit at the top. And once you get this drawn, this is our back wall, Divide the height of the back wall into eight parts. And you can check to see that you've divided this in half. You can check. I have to go up a little higher. We have to divide this up into eight. So remember to put your increments in lightly so that you can change your mind if you find that they're not right. And we'll divide in half again. And zero at the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And at five feet is our eye level. I'm going to use my red pencil to indicate that. We want to take your side of your paper and bring those increments down to the front. Turn it this way now and mark your increments along the bottom. We need 12, so we've got 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So you'll have 12 feet. Each of these, of course, now represents a foot. So we've got zero always in the corner. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And your grid has 12 feet on it as well. We're going to place our vanishing point right in the middle of the wall at six feet. So that's our vanishing point. And this is our eye level. Now don't use a ruler for this. This should all be done by hand. Let's put a little bit of the wall in so we can orient ourselves. Now, M, this is part of your mark, so if I see that you're using a ruler, I can't give you the marks that you deserve, so please make sure you do all of this by hand. Okay, so we've got a little bit of information in now. We've got the floor, the wall, and this other wall. Okay, so it doesn't include everything that your grid does, but it's enough for us to get started. We're going to place our sofa against the back wall. I'm going to continue on with my pencil crayon so that when I put my black lines in, I can differentiate what's going on. So I'm going to go one, two, three and a half. So between nine and ten, I'm putting a mark because our sofa is seven feet wide. So one, two, three and a half. And I'm going to make a box on the back wall. I'm going to start with an elevation on the back wall, and I'm going to bring it forward. So I've got three. Now, the height, the standard height for the back of a sofa is three feet. Now, notice I'm not looking at my reference picture at all. I'm just going to put the standard measurements down. And I would advise you when you do your sketch of your choice of sofa that you do the same. Now, there we are. We've got three feet for the back of the sofa. Two and a half feet is standard for a, a, the height of the arm. So, and put that up. And one and a half is standard for the height of the seat. So, I'm put that up. So, we all know that now. See how I'm getting it from the side measurement? 
I'm going to use the vanishing point to bring the seat forward. And I'm going to bring the seat forward on the floor. And this is the top of the seat, so I'm going to bring that forward. And it's time now to look at our reference. So our reference looks as if it's about a standard depth for the seat of a sofa, so I'm going to estimate. You have to start somewhere. We have to estimate. So we're going to, in a sketch, you estimate. That seems, that seems about right. So we're looking for about 2 feet or 24 inches. So that seems okay here. And I won't know till I start playing around with the other increments, but I'm going to leave it for now. Once you have two points at the front here, you bring up a vertical. Remember, the verticals are important. If you're stuck, it's probably because you haven't put up the next vertical. And it's crossing my perspective line for my seat. So, now, when I was doing this, I was also thinking that I've got arms, and the arm at the back is like the back of the sofa, so I'm going to lose some of that depth. So that was part of my figuring when I put that depth in. And you'll probably have a back to your sofa, so that kind of idea will work as well when you're doing your sketch. So now I've got, when I've got this perspective line that I drew from the seat of the height of the seat of the chair at the back, when I bring it forward and it crosses this line that represents the height of the seat of the sofa. Now, where they connect, I've got the seat of my sofa at the front. Everyone's seat for their sofa should measure one and a half. That won't vary from anybody's box drawing or anybody's sketch. That won't vary, no matter what your sofa looks like. Put it at the seat of the heath. The height of the arm might change though, that might look different. The height of the back might look different, your sofa might be higher, but the seat remains the same at one and a half. Now you have to have one that stays solid so you can judge things by it. Okay, now we have here arms that, an arm that sticks out, so we have to adjust for that. So I'm going to come up here and Subtract a little from the width of my sofa. Have I got the right amount? I don't know. I have to try it. You have to try something. And bring that back always to your vanishing point so that you get the right size at the back of the sofa as well as at the front. Okay, this is the height for the arm. I haven't brought that out. There, I'm bringing my arm height, bringing this vertical up, bringing this vertical up. I've got a perspective line and a vertical line touching, so I've got to go the other way. And that's going to give me this, where I'm going to put that. Okay, so I can start now to put that in that little curve for my arm. I've got to make the same box at the back though, or it's not going to work, is it? We've got to make sure we put, we transfer what we do at the front, we transfer it to the back. Now this is going to go like that, so I can go like that. And it's not, so most of this is hidden, I'm not going to see it, so that's not a problem. Then I want to bring it down onto the seat, so I have to transfer that back with the vanishing point. Now I've got a nice gentle curve. 
kind of a weird looking little thing here, but it's what we need. We've got that now for the arm. I don't have an arm on the other side. I've got a back. And the back for a standard sofa is three feet. So I'm going to bring that forward, that three feet. I'm going to bring it forward. But I've got the same setup as this. I've got to allow for that. So I'm going to bring this up until it touches three feet. Not the two and a half, but the three feet that I brought from the back, over from the side to the back. I've got my three feet. I've got to do this again. So whatever I did over here, I can use on the other side. So I can bring that up. Now I've got another box on the outside, just like I had over here. And I'm going to make this curve. That's this curve over here. So I have to choose how deep to make it. And I'm going to come up and over and across and I have to do the same thing at the back so however much I went over here I do the same over there because it's the same And we've got now this gentle... Now, it looks very different because this is in two-point perspective. There are two vanishing points going on. See, these are racing to one over here. And your example may look like this, too. So, and they're racing to another vanishing point way over to the right. But we're doing one point. So ours is going to necessarily look different. It has to. So I'm bringing this down now. I can bring where those two meet. I've got another point. I use my vanishing point and bring it to the back of the seat. And I can go through the same gentle process of making that arc that I made at the front. And now I've got this. But it's straight here. See how straight it is. So I've got to make this straight. And you can decide where you want the straightness to end and the arc to begin. And you can fix that. I think I was too generous on this depth. I made that too wide. So I would fix that. I can fix that here. You would fix that. Make that gentle, gentler. But this sketch is part of your discovery. When you drew it into your actual drawing, you would make all the corrections that you discovered that you needed to make on this drawing. And the back now is interesting too. It angles. I've got an angle here. I've got this angle, but then it goes straight. So it angles, then it goes straight, and then it angles up a bit. So I've got two angles here at the back. And it's a thickness. It has a thickness, so I have to put a thickness. And it kind of encroaches a little bit on my seat for my chair, my sofa. And we've got about the same amount of room left as this one has. Then we've got a thick cushion at the front and we've got some upholstery And we've got some legs. We've got legs at the front that we see. It's fun 
to do kind of a little gesture to get the shape and then later when you darken it up you'll get the outline and then we've got a cushion that's kind of sloping over and it starts here remember it starts here where this is so it's going to sit back here use your vanishing point even the cushions have to obey the vanishing points so our cushion is going to be here now it's kind of folding in on itself so got to give it some thickness and it's folding in on itself You're going to do a little floor plan view of this, and that's quite simple. You just take the, the length of it. You show the roll of the arm, but you can't really represent it. You can maybe put a little shadow there. We're representing member seven feet here, and we took about half of it for that. And there is a little part that's slanted, so you can indicate a little bit there. Then we have this in the corner, and we come forward. We can't show the curves. The only way you can show it is if you shade this a little bit like the cylinder and put a little bit of reflected light there. That's really the only way you can show it. And your cushion, you could kind of angle the line down so that you're showing that it rests and plumps out over here and put a border around this now you would go back you can use your pencil crayons this far but you have to go back with either your pen tell sign pen or your sharpie to go back and claim what it is you want to keep this i think was too far so i'm going to bring that back a little bit this part and this part is our this part and we have this part and this part and this part there's our cushion and there's this part this part this part and now we can kind of clean up our little funny legs that got a little strange there but we were doing a gesture so we could get the right shape for them but that'll do for a, a little sketch we won't see the back ones they're going to be way back here we won't see them and now for our inside lines we would clean this up quite a lot too now they're thinner you can finesse this a little bit with a little bit thicker pen inside and a black pen we can put our cushion up And our upholstery, break up our upholstery. Put our cushion. And our floor plan, we want to refine that with our black pen. You can use your cross corners. Put our cushion up. And this is encroaching on our seat, the depth for our seat. The last thing is our scale figure. And if we put our eyes on the eye level, then we 
where her feet end up is not important. It, she'll show a scale. It might be better if she were closer to the sofa, the one that I've drawn here. She, because of her size, she's a little fur, far away from our sofa, but see, she would be that far away from our sofa. You're going to take your tracing paper, take it to the photocopy machine, and I'll have a video up to show you how to scale it down. But see, he's six feet, so I would have to draw through the six feet. If I stood him against the wall, he's too short. I'd have to put him where the top of his head touched six feet. He could stand there near our sofa, and he looks convincing, doesn't he? He could convincingly stand right there. He's that far away from our sofa. He's that many feet away from our sofa. But it's convincing. He'd be comfortable there waiting for his date to show up. Okay. Maybe she's putting on her lipstick or something, and she'd be right out to meet him. And this lady, who's grabbing for something I don't know what, we'd put her eyes on the eye level, and she's even further out. You can see she's quite tall, and this lady's even taller with her eyes on the eye level. She's at the front of our room, and the sofa is that far away from her. It would suit her, too.